Usually when you have financial link, you think that the targets might be uh, DNA. Also with copper, copper and with both copper and vanadium have uh, redox activity. So we thought that maybe um, they could cleavage DNA or bind to DNA. So we did a lot of um, electrophoresis studies. And uh, so basically, at 1 hour and 50, 50 micromolar uh, concentration of the complex, since they were not able to induce any significant uh, DNA damage. However, if we uh, increase the concentration to 100 micromolar and incubation time of 5 hours, we could see that, for instance, complexes 2 and 5, so complexes up to 5 are copper complexes, from 6 to 10 are vanadium complexes, so complexes 2 and 5 are able to induce changes in DNA, uh, transforming the supercoils to nicked and maybe a little bit of linear. Um, sometimes it is necessary to have a reducing or um, oxidizing agents in the system uh, to, do some, to activate the complexes and this is why we made some studies with oxone, which is an oxidant. And we could see that in the presence of oxon, copper complexes 1, 2 and 5 show no bands, so they total, totally destroyed DNA. Um, the vanadium complexes, for instance, complex 10 and complex uh, 7, they are able to induce changes in DNA, and we can see the presence of nicked and linear forms of DNA. Um, in the presence of MPA, MPA is a reducing agent. Uh, once again, we see the total disappearance of DNA bands for complexes 2 and 5. Uh, for complex 1, we do not see supercoiled DNA anymore, and the same, almost the same happens with uh, vanadium complex 10 and vanadium complex 7. So what we can see is that we really need um, activating agents uh, to have some uh, DNA cleavage um, in the presence of this type of complexes. So, um, nuclease activity increases with the complex concentration and the presence of reducing and oxidizing agents has a significant effect which is more remarkable for copper phenethylene complexes where the linear form is observed in large extent in some cases. But anyway, all complexes show strong nuclease activity in the presence of the activating agents with complex 2 and 5. This is the sal Li fen and sal l phenyl alanine fen complex being able to cleavage DNA even in the absence of activating agents. So we can say that globally the copper complexes are more active than the vanadium complexes and um, we have three complexes which are the most efficient ones. Um, so we also wanted to know if they were on, the copper complexes were only able to damage DNA or if they could interact in some other way. So we did some uh, spectroscopic studies uh, by UV visible absorption, okay? and also by circular decreasm and uh, typically what we do is we incubate we can do this in several ways, in this case we mix this comp copper complex Cirrus uh, Sound Life N 100 micromolar concentration with uh, calf times uh, DNA 1 to 4 and we saw if we had some effect and we followed uh, this with, with time and we see that there is a decrease in the intensity of the spectrum upon mixing, so this is a uh, complex alone, this is after addition of, of DNA, and we also have a shift into the blue in these bands. 
by CD, we could see that this is a very low quality, very low quality image, but this is the spectrum of DNA alone. Okay, this has the typical uh, 275 and 245 uh, maximum bands. And when we mixed with the copper complex, there was a strong increase of, I don't know, I think around 30% of this band here. So if you look into the literature, these are, this is evidence of uh, interaction between the complex and DNA, probably by intercalation of the phenethylid ligands in the in the base pairs of the DNA. Uh, we also did some fluorescence with um, ethidium bromide. So ethidium bromide is a very good intercalator. So usually it goes into it intercalates in the middle of the DNA base pairs, and so. When ethidium bromide is intercalated, uh, its uh, fluorescence is protected from quenching. So this means that if you have another compound that is able to displace ethidium bromide from the DNA, ethidium bromide goes into solution where its fluorescence is quenched. So fluorescence quenching in this case means that there is some interaction of the complex with DNA. So a replacement of ethidium bromide by our complex. So we did studies for these two complexes. Um, here you see the fluorescence spectra. In this figure you have like the relative uh, fluorescence intensity at 611 nanometers. And you see that uh, at a ratio of around 4 we have like 85% of quenching which is similar, more or less, in this case. So the first approach is always to do a stern volmer linearization, which you can see here that, okay, um, maybe it's not so good, so we believe that it's not only a dynamic uh, quenching effect, that there should be other effects. For instance, here we did a quadratic um, fitting, and the fitting is, is better, so so we think that there are several processes competing at the same time, okay? Um, but if we compare both complexes and the stern volmer constants that we can always <coughs> calculate in the beginning of the, of the quenching, we can see that this compound containing uh, phenylalanine has a higher constant than the one with sunlight. So, um, all these complexes were able to induce conformational changes in DNA. Uh, I didn't show all the cases, but we have some better cases than others, but all of them were able to induce these conformational changes. Um, in the case of vanadium compounds, we could see the formation of uh, atoms. So, we have um, the formation of new species, probably by covalent binding. And we believe that when we have uh, compounds containing phenethylene, the process involves intercalation. Um, also, the fluorescence results uh, correlated well with the cytotoxicity, which showed that in most cell types, this complex, there is an L missing here, the phenylalanine complex is more cytotoxic than cell life, and it also sh showed a higher quenching. And they also correlate well with the DNA cleavage experiments that show that the phenethylene complexes, either vanadium or, or copper, could display stronger DNA interaction ability than the pyridine analogs. Also, the copper complexes showed much higher cytotoxic activity than the corresponding vanadium complexes and to reference drug cisplatin. So I'll show another, just a few results we had with a system that we started to work uh, more recently. Um, we were thinking zinc is, um, is present in our body, so there are a few studies. When we were working with vanadium, uh, some people were, as an insulin mimetic, some people were working with, uh, with zinc. And sometimes the results were kind of similar. And so introducing uh, as a drug a metal which uh, is already in your body, 
can be uh, can have less toxic effects, although it can also interact with other processes that you have going on in your body. But so we decided to uh, prepare again cell Y complexes with zinc two and different phenethylates. So our initial idea was to have um, sulfonated groups in the phenethylene to increase its uh, water solubility. The problem was that all the complexes we obtained were very hard to characterize, so we are not sure that we have the right complexes. So we also tried these uh, <coughs> phenethylates that we had around in the lab, um, and so we characterized a series of zinc complexes. Um, we obtained a very strange structure for one of the complexes with this battle-phenethylene uh, ligand in which we have two zinc um, atoms, two salvoli ligands and two phenethylenes but in fact one zinc is coordinated to two phenethylenes and sharing two uh, coordination to the two phenolates and the other zinc is coordinated to <coughs> two cell-like uh, molecules. So, uh, we did some cytotoxicity to see if we um, should go ahead with these compounds, if they have some properties or not. And you can see that, uh, so we studied different cell lines that you see here, so the same ovarian cancer cell lines, breast cancer, these are cervical carcinoma cells, and these are non-tumoral uh, embryonic kidney cells, and in some cases, like we have very bad, bad values 100 uh, micromolar IC50 values, 200, but then we have some cases, for instance, with epoxyphen, uh, batophenantrolin. So, this one shows some good results, and uh, in some cases, they were better than the ones obtained for cisplatin. So we thought, okay, maybe we should go ahead with this, do some studies to see the effects on, a, on DNA, for instance. But the problem is that these compounds are not stable at all in solution. So in organic solvents, it's okay, they are stable when you mix. So this is in a 95% phosphate buffer. They totally uh, change with time within one hour. We have a completely different complex, and so um, we are at a point that we don't, I don't think we are going to proceed with these uh, ligands, these compounds. We are thinking about probably um, preparing the complex, because we think the problem is this imid bond here. So maybe if we use a reduced version in which we have a CN single bond, uh, we believe that uh, maybe the, the, the stability in aqueous solution will increase and maybe will still have some good cytotoxicity uh, activity and we can proceed with this line of research. So uh, this was what I wanted to tell you today. Uh, I will finish by acknowledging people that have been collaborating in the last um, decade or so. We have collaboration with Inora Gambino uh, in um, antiparasitic uh, compounds. So basically they develop the compounds, we do uh, studies by EPR, by uh, NMR and other techniques. Um, Professor Mario Schultz was doing, uh, spent some time also in Lisbon uh, with us uh, and took some routine in compounds from Alzir, Batista. Uh, Fiona Marx is the person that does most of our cell studies. Some of these people have been involved uh, in collaboration works all over the years, Fred Pava and Police Lights from um, Universidade de Boa Paulista um, are collaborating and doing the anti TB uh, studies. AFM studies are done with Virtudes Moreno in Barcelona, and these are collaborators uh, from the pH potentiometric studies in Hungary. Isabel Tabaco helps us with the uh, electrophoretic studies. And of course, we can never forget to um, acknowledge the funding, without which we could not do research. And um, of course, um, you for your attention, and I'll leave you with some pictures from this one. So these are cities, cities. 
beaches around Lisbon. This one is a bit far, farther away, but all these are within 50 miles of Lisbon. And this, this is a beautiful city. We also have Alsada. Eh? And okay, thank you all for your kind attention.